Hello again, welcome to Chinatown Gang Stories. Right now we're in Chinatown Fair. This arcade has been here for a very long time. I mean, you could, this, we're on Mastery right now. You can find out the history behind this uh, arcade. It's one of the very few remaining arcades left over here in New York City. And um, I remember growing up as a kid over here. This is a uh, Ghost Shadows territory. And the Ghost Shadows used to hang out right over here by the staircase a whole bunch of them will hang out and I remember seeing them as a kid coming over here this uh, place inside I remember the uh, games that they had in here uh, were the ski balls I remember playing ski ball when I was uh, four or five years old coming here playing the ski ball uh, also I remember a, a live chicken uh, game over here the tic tac toe and also um, they had like this uh, photo booth. I remember the photo booth. Yeah. Me and my uncle used to take photos inside that photo booth in here. And they also had one of those um, in the 70s. They had, uh, you put a coin in there, it was like a foot massager. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that as a kid. Um, and I also remember this place used to be really dark. It's not as bright as it is now. It used to be really dark and it used to scare me as a kid because I remember going all the way in and making that left turn and inside there was like a big dragon head um, hanging on the ceiling and that used to like scare the hell out of me. Yeah, so uh, it's changed now. We don't no longer have the live chicken game over here. No photo proof. A lot of people are gone. Everything's changed. I haven't been in this side for a long time. So let's go in and take a tour of the place and show you what it's like. So this was a turn that Mike was talking about? So as you guys can see, this place is not that big. And look who we got here. We got Kenny and Carrothead. What are you guys playing? The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. Have you died already? Yeah, I got a little Look at Kenny. Look at Kenny go. Oh! Go, motherfucker! Yeah. Just like the good old days. Okay, so, um, as everybody know, um, after 2001, I came back home from uh, doing my uh, time in the feds. I went straight, uh, work, uh, nine to five job. I was, you know, Keeping myself occupied as a normal citizen, you know. So in 2013, I was dating a, uh, a, a girl that was uh, playing Mahjong on Pell Street. Uh, uh, with, uh, she was playing Mahjong at a, uh, at a Mahjong place that was uh, operated by one of my friends uh, named McKay, which came from San Francisco. Uh, I met him when he was there in New York and he, he did some time in the feds. So eventually we became friends. So I went up there to pick up my girl and eventually uh, ran into the boss. Uh, okay, okay, he's like, hey, listen, uh, I want to meet the uh, uh, Hatai, uh, Shrimp Boy. Shrimp Boy's uh, 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 one of Shrimp Boy's boys that came over from San Fran, right? So I met him. Uh, I, I forgot what his name was. You know, I didn't really, you know, I was just being very polite. You know, I said hi, this and that. So he seemed kind of like, you know, ticked off that. I didn't really believe that he was a uh, shrimp boy's guy, so, I, so he uh, automatically uh, slipped out his phone and called over to uh, San Fran, uh, got his uh, Tai Lo on phone with uh, shrimp boy, and he said, oh, uh, there's hot go, right? So I took, oh, took the phone, he passed it over to me, I said hi, said some pleasantries, uh, 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 comments, you know, with him, said hi, this, uh, how you doing, everything, you know? Uh, and then we started playing, after, after the phone call, we started playing uh, Mahjong. Uh, he said, oh, let's play a couple rounds. I played a couple rounds, though. and for some reason, I think that this guy was high or something like that, because every, every two hand of fucking Mahjong, he'd be running into the fucking bathroom. So I figured out, yo, yo, he's doing this shit, I'm not gonna knock the fucking guy's uh, uh, leisure, you know? He do what he want to do. But uh, I think I said something like, uh, 
I was winning. I, so he was kind of ticked off on it, and uh, including that he's high. So he wasn't really fond of it, and he we exchanged some words, and then I bitched at him. Like, yeah, I, 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 I forgot what I said that ticked him off. He got up and and he tried to shove me, but I once he fucking uh, got up and tried to shove me. I fucking grabbed him and I fucking choked told him I and I threw him on the floor. Cause this guy's like fucking 90 pounds to me. Right? Um uh, and, and besides he's fucking on drugs, so weakened at me. I threw him on the floor. Um the guys separated us, some guys grabbed me. I told the guys if you you motherfuckers still wanna be in China house and keep your fucking arms, you better yo, get them off of me right now. So eventually they got off of me, but they were still holding me down. I walked over to him. I looked him on the floor, I said, yo, check this out, bro. All right. You're on my turf, all right? You're in Chinatown, you're in my fucking town. Now, if I whip your ass, all right, right here, and then fucking word goes out that, yo, I'm picking on you, and I'm disrespecting a, a, a hot girl, shrimp boy. Now, I don't want no fucking uh, uh, beef with him. Right? Not that I'm scared, but there's no need for that type of shit. I'm clean already, right? I went straight. And, and he kept on fucking yapping on his mouth. I said, you listen, if I, do, if I whip your ass right now, it, everybody's got, word goes out, everybody think I'm gonna, I'm, I'm fucking bullying you in my fucking town. Now, I'll tell you what, I'll go over to fucking San Fran, all right? And if I run into you in fucking San Fran, I'll whip your ass over there in front of your boys, all right? Okay. Just to give the respect to your how, how, how goal, right? And that was it, and, and I never saw him again. You know? He went back over to uh, San Fran. Um, I think it's unnecessary, but he, he provoked it. I try to be nice and pleasant. Um, like I said, I've, ever since I've been home, I've, uh, things have changed. The uh, environment has changed, people's personality changed, and the trend has changed. I try to be polite and nice to people, but for some reason, they think I'm a fucking her. You know, they, they push me to the limit, and everybody's have, have that limit that I'm not gonna you know, let go. Right? And once you heat me up, fuck that. I don't care who the fuck you are or where I'm at. Uh, I don't care if you're fucking cunt standing in front of me. If I'm gonna whip your eyes, I'm gonna whip your eyes. You know? I'll, I'll deal with the consequences later. I shouldn't be thinking that way. Uh, as as I get older, you know, I should calm down. But you know, it, it's it's in my DNA. I can't help it. You know what I'm saying? But violence is not the way. Let's put it this way. I I know that. Everybody knows that. I will try to keep my cool. Thank you. Hi everybody. Yeah, I'm a big head. Uh, we're standing at this uh, the Pale Street. That's the Dragon. Cemetery. Before I never stand at this street for more than five minutes. Okay, always pass by. That's it. And uh, you see the building here. This Hip Seng. Hip Seng is the headquarter of the Fire Dragon. Everybody know that anyway. Okay. Uh, you see the basement right here. You see the basement right here. Before is a gambling house down there. And in front of the gambling house down there and that's what the scientist got killed at. okay what i heard the story is um he receiving a phone call that night and uh they tried to tell him to come down and have a meeting that's what i heard and as soon as he, he got on the street and he got down there uh he's not even inside yet he's outside and, and uh somebody just showed him i think show him a, a lot of time and uh, kill him right here um that's where he died okay okay one time happened uh my soldier they went to the party and uh two of my soldier they got kidnapped by the fire dragon and they bought him they bought them down here on the pale street and uh inside the dragon i have friends inside the dragon also they call me, they tell me, oh, your, your soldiers, uh, uh, they kidnap your soldier and, uh, to the Pell Street and uh, ask me to, you know, come down here and pick them up. So at that time, I was in the Division Street. I was on the Division Street. After I received a phone call, I said, fuck that. I just come down, I just grab my gun and then I just walk down here myself and pick up my uh, two soldiers. At that time, uh, the dragon have a, they separate a couple of group. They have like, like uh, American born Chinese 
which is a dragon, and they have some Vietnamese people, which is a dragon. But the Vietnamese people and me is like real close. We are we are friends. We never got got any problem. So I was calling them. I say I will come down Pell Street and pick up my soldier. So they say uh, when I say not right now, and uh, they say okay, you come down uh, after ten minutes. They go set up everything first. So when the time will come down. They separate in two sides. One side is the Vietnamese people. One side is the is the ABC, and they knew they already knew I come down here for what reason. So the Vietnamese dragon and go up there and you know pick up my two two soldier and uh, come down to the street and uh, tell me to bring them bring them back to the division street. Mm -hmm. But the ABC guy and try to you know. Try to stop me and try to you know do something to me and the Vietnamese guy just go over the ABC guy and tell them to stop. Right. So there okay. were both flying dragons, but different yeah. factions. Right? Yeah. So I pick up my two soldier and I walk down to Doyle Street and go back to Division Street. Nothing yeah. happened. I'm lucky that time too. Right. So yeah. Bigger, just to paint a picture. So you yeah. came from down that street. Yeah. And then you came and picked a brother up yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And go to Doyle Street and go back to Division Street. And this is Pell and Doyle's is down this way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um Big S. So a lot of us also know that the reason why you were on the street ah. was because one of your brothers, Fat Boy, mm -hmm. was killed. He was shot and killed mm -hmm. when he was playing placing a bet for horse racing, right? Yeah, yeah. Can you show us that spot? That's one of my oldest member in TO and they then he told my classmate, he told my best friend to come down to Pell Street because before that then there's an OTB and Pell Street. Yeah. And uh, he tell him to come down Pell Street and uh, buy a racing horse ticket. Right. And can then he got kidnapped. Right. Can we? Can you show us where it was? Okay. So right. We are walking down the street towards uh, Bowery Street. Yep. So we're on Pell, walking towards Bowery. This mm -hmm. is all flying. This was all flying uh, dragons territory. Mm-hmm. So we're going to the spot where his Chinese nickname was Fei Zai, which yeah. roughly translates to Fat Boy, was yeah. one of Big Head's closest uh, brothers. Yeah, yeah. Before he was on the streets. Yeah. It, before the officially member. Right. We just hang out, we just fooling around, but we never get, before that, we never, we never get trouble with Dragon, and that's the worst. Right. The OTB is right here. You see a building right here? Before yep. this OTB. So, what's, where's the entrance? OTB right here. Is this one. Okay. This one right here. So now it's blocked. Oh, this is the This is the OTB. Okay. Wow. Before, this is the OTB. And they have a newspaper stand right here. Uh-huh. And my brother, he have to come down here to buy a ticket. For that guy, okay. Yeah. And you can't say his name. <laughs> he 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 passed away already. Right. Tiger Boy. It's always okay. Tiger Boy. Yeah. Uh, Clever Wong's brother. Yeah. Younger. Brother. And uh, from what I heard, because a lot of people saw the incident, what happened? My brother is not even in. Uh, no, my brother's inside buying ticket. The dragon saw him, and they always thought he's a officially TO member. Right, because you guys will hang not. out. He's not. You yeah. guys just hung out. We are not. Not, yeah. not at yet. that time. Not yet. Yeah. So they come here when 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 my when my friend finished buying ticket. When he come out, and they were standing right here and waiting for him. And this the new stand right here. Before they tear that off already. Before that's a new stand right here. Okay, they are they are all stand right here and waiting for him to come out. So as soon he come out. They park a van right here, a brown van right here, and they keep let him to take him inside the van. But he he's like he know what happened when they you know when they try to rock him, and uh, he already know what happened. He tried to van, and he kicked the new stand, the new stand right here. So my friends kicked the new stand. The whole thing is dent. Okay, that's what people tell me. Mm. That's the and I believe that's the true story too. Right. And then they grab him to the inside of the van and then they kill him inside the van and drop the body in the fashion metal park. Right. Yeah, that's 
my first brother got killed. Right. Mm -hmm. You guys saw on the news that that night, and right, yeah. that yeah. was the start of all of it. Yeah, yeah. They found they found his brother in Fashion Well. They found his body in uh, Fashion Well Park. Right. That's the story. Hi everybody, I'm here uh, on my uh, old turf, uh, Bayard and uh, Elizabeth, uh, with my buddy uh, from childhood, my childhood friend, Lo Wang Tao. Uh, so, right across the street, 57 Bayard, you can see on the dirt floor, uh, those uh, two windows to your left is where my, uh, our freaking apartment we call, uh, our clubhouse that we used to, uh, all the all the Lang Jais, all the kids, uh, all of us freaking stay or hang out. You know? We also have another clubhouse down on Mott, across the street from uh, Wahop. So, uh, this is it. My old turf. Feels uh, completely different. And get and take a look at this way. Uh, take a look at this way. See down the block over there, right in the middle? You see all these NYPD uh, police cars? Fucking fifth piece tickets, right down the block, right in the middle of the block. All right? They're like freaking uh, within uh, a thousand feet from where we, we used to fucking uh, hang out every day. And uh, if you come this way, uh, I'll show you uh, Mei Lai Wa, the world famous uh, freaking uh, roast pork bun. So as you see, there's still a line over here. They're famous for that shit. And you see that uh, the stoop over there? Every day, this is where I be hanging out at. When I wake up, I come down, grab my coffee, grab my freaking bun, and I'll be hanging out here all day. Now, if you come in here, I'll show you where I used to put my guns. Come on. <laughs> this is where I put all my guns. It's all not right? that big as you can see. Right? Yeah. I can put, yo, know, it's deep in there. I could put my fucking guns in there. You could fit a freaking uh, Beretta 9mm in there. For real. Alright. That's all how far it goes, that's it? Yeah, it's enough to put my freaking uh, 9mm in there. You know? This is just one of the mailboxes. We have mailboxes all around our, our, our blocks. Alright. Famous oh. Chinatown Ice Cream Factory. Yeah. Oh. That's the famous world, uh, world famous freaking Chinatown Ice Cream Factory. Uh, it's been there for ages, ever since I was Older a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> older than us. Yeah. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, check that way. See, we're we're we're, we're within probably freaking a uh, couple thousand uh, 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 feet away from the goddamn uh, the tombs, the courthouses. Uh, funny that how we operate down in uh, Chinatown as a gang back then. But we're so close to the precinct and the freaking uh, like the courthouses. Yeah, but we weren't scared. People, <laughs> you know, when we used to uh, be in Division Street, cops used to drive by all the time, never scared. Yeah. We were hoping something would do happen, you know, back in the days. Even though we were rival gangs, we never hurt each other. We never sh thought about shooting each other. We're fucking childhood friends. Yeah. We knew each other forever, man. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't have the heart to fucking... Uh, I mean, you know, Her we probably might have remember. a little argument, but yeah. that's about it. But nothing serious, Never. you know? Never. Um, How long uh, did you know each other? Since oh, high school. The freshman okay. year of high school. Over 30, almost 30 35 years. years. Yeah, 35, 35 years. years. How yeah. did you meet? Uh, fucking, I used to hang out, I uh, used to go down to Murrow High School. He used to uh, cut out. I used and to I cut used out. to cut out. We used to hang out in the hang park out, all day. Uh, remember that uh, handball court? Yeah, yeah we yeah, used to yeah. play handball two, all day. Two blocks away from uh, <laughs> the high school. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Midwood Field. Midwood Field, We yeah. used to break night there all the yeah. time, right? Yeah. Those were the good old days. And after that, yeah. after school was over, we went to uh, Playboys. Uh, play, uh, Playboys Triangle to yeah. shoot pool. Yeah, and that's where this, this fucking comes in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and he comes in hang out with us after uh, when, when we're all there, you know? Yeah, that was uh, the good old days, yeah. We used to play pool uh, from like 3 o'clock on to like 9 o'clock at night. You, you know what's funny about nowadays and, and back then? We even had a fucking pager. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and we're able to freaking keep in contact with each other every fucking yeah. day. As if nowadays everybody got a phone and, and nobody have any type of physical contact. The funny thing was that we did the same routine every day. So if you were looking for Kenny or him or me, we're right there. Go to the Palladium. I mean, yep. go to Palladium. Go to the Triangle, go to Playboy, or go to the park. The was a nightclub. Yeah, that was a oh, nightclub. Yeah, uh, I remember. Um, yeah. The, the tunnel. The tunnel. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking uh, about playing because there were times I went there. 18, red yeah. zone, yeah. Yeah. Light. Light. Yeah. Those were the good old days, huh? Oh, uh, since the statute of limitation expired, 
the second floor on the freaking men's bathroom used to be my workshop. That's where I used to sell. <laughs> 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 I'm talking about freaking 30 years ago, all right? So don't don't come and get me now. <laughs> More than that. <coughs> All right, Lama, how, how, Lama's been, up, how, it's been closed, shut down for a while anyway, huh? Yeah. So, as you see me now, this is where I used to hang out. Now, um, nothing special, but it was, it was fun, you know? Early evening, like 8, 9 o'clock, I, I went back home to my mom's house. And once I walked in, I saw Silbo's mo mother uh, crying, right? I walked in, in, in the living room, and my mom just charged at me and fucking just decked the shit out of me, smacked the fuck out of me. I said, what the fuck, mom, what's up? She said, Silbo died. And my sister was telling me the story. I said, I didn't, I was down there. He, he, he didn't die, I saw him this afternoon. She said, no, he's dead. They killed him. Wow. And, and my mom slapped the shit out of me and said, you fucking promised that you were gonna bring him up. I said, I tried, but what the fuck you want me to do? Yeah. He, okay, you know, um, I brought him back to Brooklyn a couple of times myself, you know, uh, uh, personally. And he, I mean, I can't fucking lock him up 24-7. Uh, I can't be watching him 24-7. Uh, uh, his mom was fucking crying hysterically. And, and, and my fucking face was swelling too for my mom slapped a couple, <laughs> she slapped the fuck out of me. When I came outside, I seen, like maybe like 16 to like 20 people walking up the street, right? Mm -hmm. And they all had like pipes and knives and stuff, mm -hmm. like, you know. And um, I was like, whoa, and everybody started, everybody started, oh, oh, go, go, get, the, go get the stuff, right? So we had, the po we had like pipes and machetes and everything like hidden on the street, like on the gates. So everybody was running inside, grabbing stuff, grabbing stuff. And then um, Siu Bo, he was one of the kids that was there. And I basically, when I walked out, I just like, I seen one of the, uh, I seen one of the guys run up on Siu Bo and stab him to death. And I was just like, I, I was just stuck there for a minute until one of the older guys grabbed me like, yo, move. And then, um, and yeah, that that was like my third day there. Hey, hi, what's up? Uh, so I'm here with uh, China Mac, my brother, right? One of my brothers from Bardo Shadow. So we're back on our turf, uh, our block, uh, Bear Street. So across the street over there is Meiraiwa. So uh, that's where one of our guys, uh, Silpo, uh, got uh, got freaking knifed up and uh, got stabbed and died. So uh, Silpo's mom and my mom are really close friends. Uh, even though that day, uh, when, when that incident happened, I wasn't around. Um, but I'm gonna pass it over to, uh, to China Mac because he knows he saw he witnessed the whole day. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, go. Yeah. Uh, what's up, China Mac? You already know the vibes. Yo, man, I'm in Chinatown. It's so crazy. I, you know, I've been uh, in LA for a while, so it's always good to come back to Chinatown, come back to your roots. I feel like you need a healthy dose of this, you know, to keep the to keep you know keep you grounded you know what i'm saying so this is chinatown we on bayard street um this right here you see 57 bayard this was the first place i went to on bayard street so when i was you know y'all know my story um if you didn't if you don't know i was in junior high school when i got recruited for uh the go shadow gang and um 57 bayard was the first place I, they brought me to and uh, they had an apartment on the second floor. I think it was the second floor or third floor, one of them. And um, my first time there, and on my like the same week, there was we was eating at uh, what was this called before? Mace. Uh, Mike, what was this place called? What before? was this called again? The the restaurant. Uh, I forgot. Kenny knows, but uh, he just ran off somewhere. So we was eating at the restaurant. And then somebody came running inside, and uh, one of the bro one of the brothers was came running inside and said that, you know, uh, the my street people was coming up. So we were all eating, and um, this is exactly where it happened. Uh, they when we came outside, like there were people walking up that that block, walking up, yeah. and we seen them coming, and they was coming like. Mag. Uh -huh. Just a quick question for the viewers who don't know. So when you say the my people, you were also referring to the ghost shadows, but yeah. So my street. So there's different factions of ghost shadow. There's Bayard Street faction, and there's 
Mott Street faction. So Mott Street faction, when I joined, it was at the height of the 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 beef between my street and bayard street and depending on who the leader was at the time that beef may exist or it may not exist my street and bayard street might be you know cool it just depends on who the leader was and and if they got along with the other the other uh, boss you know so when i got there there was full-on beef right and you know they came up here and that's when i saw Siupo. he was actually coming out of that basement right there it was a gambling house he was walking up and that's where he got stopped at right there like right where that tesla car is and um and yeah man and i was standing right here i came out the the the, the restaurant and i was standing like I don't know, like close, like close to where she is. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that was my first week, and it was just like, and the police precinct is right here. Like, if y'all don't know how close this precinct is, just look at all these cars. The oh, precinct is like right here. there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it happened, and then um, it went that it went so fast, and we was fighting, and then after he dropped, there was like a couple other people that got stabbed couple of them got stabbed they had to carry they had to carry some of them out off the street and we had to you know we had to deal with Subo and um yeah that was that was that was right here right here on Bayard Street yeah yeah hey Kevin head so you were once a Tonglan member yes okay so let me know about uh what you saw upstairs in the association I think you mentioned something about uh, an 11 year old kid that you saw up there yes he was and 11 he was, years he old pretty surprised yes and his father even let him hang out with us too it was right up the block over here it was at the kung song we used to hang out there until the morning time and uh kid was there with us hanging out there was one time we got locked out of there because we went to eat i had to climb up the the kung song and go on the terrace the fucking the, balcony that? yeah the balcony just yeah. to open up the goddamn door yeah. and as i was opening up the goddamn door the police drive by i'm over there waving at the police like nothing is happening so and then they fucking locked you up they locked me up oh, they, shit. they drove right by yeah. and uh yeah i remember also one time we got uh cops came in raided the place we didn't even do nothing wrong we were so scared that we were running we ran all the way upstairs the second floor third floor third floor there was a. Uh, a uh, 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 hairstyling place. We tried to get into there. They were closed. We ran all the way up to the roof. Jumped into roof to roof. And then we got caught. But we never did anything wrong. We were just scared. So they uh, took you in? They, 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 you they in? lined us up in the front. Must have took pictures of us. Uh -huh. And then we just... They said, alright, everybody get out of here. We, we left. We didn't get locked up or nothing. I remember that. Yeah, yep. So this is my nemesis freaking association that I didn't like. Back then, the when I was a kid, was, yeah. uh, when he told me that he huh? saw that young kid who was like 11, 12 years old. Yeah. Who was it? it? No, he, then he saw the video with you and Jay. Then he put one and one together. <laughs> oh, so you recognize him? Yeah. Oh, you, you you remember him? Yes. Oh, that's oh fucking my God. funny. That's the good old oh, days. Yeah. So right. the last time he saw Jay was back when Jay was like a little kid. Yes, yeah, like 12 yeah. years old, 11, 12 years old. So Jay yeah. is in his 40s right yes. now. And, and like I was I was like 21 years old. Yes, that's like I was like 30, 21 years old. 30 yes. years 20. ago. 20, 20 Holy years. Yes. Shit. He's, this kid has got to be like 40, 40 years old, 41 years old, right now. I would say. You know. Ah, oh, guys, clear it up. Nice day in Chinatown. Hammerhead was originally with the Fu Ting. Right. Then later on, he crossed over to the Dong On. He's gonna share some stories of, about the time when he was in the Fu Ting and also uh, with the yes. Dong On. So plenty of stories. Yes. There, right, Rob? Yes. All right. Rob. Just to eliminate any stupid comments, mm. my childhood friend, <laughs> even though he was a Dong On, stole my motherfucking buddy. <laughs> Still uh, hung out together in high school. Yeah, fucking, we always <laughs> hang out together. We never, never gave it up. Uh, I remember up the block, Fu Ching. We used to have a, a gambling house over there. They used to have a gambling house. We used to go hang out there back in the day when I was with Fu Ching. Yeah, yeah, they had the gambling house right next to the Rosemary Dead. Rosemary Dead yeah. uh, by the hill. Uh, uh, the yeah. uh, didn't you guys take a picture of... Uh, uh, oh, actually, uh, Cameron, why do you call you Cameron? Because of my hair and my <laughs> used to act like, like a carrot, and then and my name also, so it matches up together to carrot head. Yeah, Lo Baktao. Yeah, Lo Baktao. Oh my God, yeah. that's a yeah. funny name, huh? Seriously, and I, to this day I still have that name. I feel so fucking different coming down here now. Yeah, right? nowadays it's yeah. totally different. I mean, uh, back, then you could, back then you could drive up the car over here, and now they blocked it off. You can't drive a car up here anymore. Remember? There used to be a car, a, a, a lane over here where you could cut in. Yeah. 
That used yeah. to be Confucius. Yeah, now you used to be able to cut it now. over there. They, they, they uh, blocked the that off. Remember, remember the statue used to be uh, Confucius when we were kids? Yeah, no, it's still Confucius. No, that's not Confucius, is it? It is. It is? Oh, it is Confucius? Yeah. I thought they changed it to uh, that... Uh, that's right? Yo, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing, how you doing guys? Are you a fan of the channel? Yeah. Come on in! Come on into the video. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. How you doing? in general, Pat. Pat, how you doing? Carrot head. What's up, man? Yeah. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Yes, man. Yeah. How are you? Thank yeah. you. Thank you for your support. I mean, I grew up here too, man. Fuck you grew up here. You look young, man. What do you mean, forty something? Yeah. Ah, you look young. I stay single. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah, That's I like a good it. thing. My stress, you know. Yes, yes, it is. That's great to hear that. All right, man. Okay. You're nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet 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 you. And this is the fifth precinct in Chinatown. Right in the heart of Chinatown, fifth precinct. That's all the gangs that always come down here. <laughs> Any uh, Chinatown gang yep. members who get arrested back yep. in those days, this is where they go. Yeah, when I just bet them and I still on the street, uh, anything happen, they don't come to my turf and uh, you know arrest me, they just call me, call me up at the association and then tell me to come down here. And this is the place. I've been here a lot of time. There was and, a uh, there was a special unit called the J Squad that specifically targeted the Chinatown gangs. Mm, J Squad, yes. Remember? Yes. Uh, that was uh, in the 1970s, all the way up until the early yeah. 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, the f famous detective on the J Squad, I think all the gangster low them is uh. O'Neill, Smitty, Mike Wen, um, yeah, this Neil, couple guys, yeah, Neil. yeah, O'Neill, yeah. yeah, and uh, they are all famous. All the all the gang in Chinatown, they will smell their their scents, okay, <laughs> and they are the one who kicking all the gangster every single day. How about the yellow taxi cab? The famous yellow taxi cab that um, anti-crime unit used yeah, to drive Yeah, they have around. like they have like two, I think, two yellow cab and uh, one TLC and uh, a van. Okay, and a van, and you can it's an unmarked cop car, and you cannot even tell they are cop car. Okay, they don't. They just a regular taxi driver. Those guys are not. good. They caught a lot of people. Yep. <laughs> they call a lot of people yep. with that. Uh, yep. They call me once too. The uh, yellow cap. And um, nothing much change. Look yeah. the same. The yellow cap caught uh, one of the guys in my crew. Mm -hmm. They did a robbery over here, uh, a jewelry store robbery, and it was in the news. I believe it was 1994. Um, the guy that was uh, the protecting the jeweler. He was an off-duty cop or a retired cop, mm -hmm. and there was a uh, shots exchange, and uh, two of them uh, took off, got away. Uh, one of them was shot, and they, the two of them, went to hide out uh, in a barber shop on the second mm -hmm. floor. They hid out there for about 20 minutes, and they looked out the window. They saw that the coast was clear. They came out, and sure enough. They got bagged by the uh, yellow taxi cab, the, the guys in the yellow taxi cab. <laughs> yeah, so uh, they wind up doing like 10 years. Yeah, they're always like, it's not hiding. They just pop in the street and uh, pretend they are waiting for, you know, waiting for a customer like that. And you cannot even tell. But afterward, everybody, everybody know that. Everybody know that that yellow cab is a car. And... Yes. Chinatown is uh, different now. It's very quiet. You know, yeah, um, now it's different. You don't hear those gunshots. No, every not day anymore. anymore. Not anymore. It used to be uh, on a daily basis, weekly basis, you would hear gunshots. Uh -huh. And uh, just like not even one block away, a half block is a uh, Bayer Street, right? And uh, they always you know, have a gang fight over there, and the cops just standing here. Yeah, and on the rooftops, they used to hang out on the yeah. rooftop, fire your shots. Mm hmm. And uh, across the street, all the buildings new right now. Before it's not like this. It to look totally different now. Times have changed. 
Um, any story for the fifth? Um, uh, yeah, we're gonna have some stories. Yeah, uh, yeah they have a couple, couple shooting couple victims yeah. who ran inside the uh, fifth precinct. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have stories coming. That's not uh, my people. That's why. Right. Yeah, waiting for them to talk, tell you guys the stories. Stories will be coming your way. Yeah, just yeah, a matter of for time. Them to tell you we're guys. gonna share those stories with the uh, viewers one day. Uh, we're gonna have the people come on this channel when they're ready mm -hmm. to talk about it. Okay, so uh, as you as you see, I'm right on my block, hanging out on my block. 30 something years later. Uh, so every day, four or five o'clock in the afternoon, this is where I hang out. So make sure that nobody uh, uh, out of the pocket that's not supposed to be on our block, hang out, come down our turf, you know, and start some shit. So right here, I'm uh, standing right under the association that that uh, one of my uh, the original founding fathers of uh, Ghost Shadow, uh, Applehead, in Lot How. Um, he hangs out here all the time. He plays mahjong. I think he's a uh, he's a prominent me uh, member over here uh, for the, with this uh, association. I saw him there. Hey, lah, Go, go, go. Don't move, hold So you see, there's uh, this uncle right now. This passes. us. He's going up there to play mahjong. All right. Either that or to play cards. Yeah, whatever the fuck they do up yeah. there. Um, so I hang out down here every day. Just to me, uh, right next to me, I wow, you know, my uh, my breakfast and lunch and uh, sometimes dinner uh, place, and I scout uh, and uh, secure the the block and make sure nobody uh, comes in there and starts shit. So if somebody does start shit, see that apartment over there, 57 Bayard, right on top of the the meat market on the third floor, okay. to the left, the two windows to the left. One of them usually uh, the windows are open. So if somebody walking down a block and I'm not familiar with and I think they're gonna start some shit I'll be calling out yo go in and they hear me and they'll, they'll uh, my boys will be uh, running down or uh, support me you know um, to check on these guys and see if they where the fuck they belong you know well uh, we used to do the same thing we used to hang out at nighttime by Division Street by in front of the, the gambling house yeah. just looking good and hanging out with the ladies used to hang out make sure no problems uh, we used to hang out inside the Gong Saw to play cards, you know, make sure everything, just having fun, enjoying time. Used to go to the pool hall. Yeah. Remember going to the pool hall? Yeah, but I never go to the pool hall in, uh, in the city. When I do want to shoot pool, I, I come back to Brooklyn and hang out with you guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where do we used to hang out? Tell, yeah. tell, tell the fans. Uh, uh, Playboy. What, what pool are you guys used to go to? We, we used to go to Playboy, we used to go to Triangle, remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and where else? Queens, we used to go to Golden Q. Yeah. But when we're we saw them because of the, the, the KP and the freaking yeah, Frank Dragons and the Tigers always Yeah, there. we still went there yeah. still. It was yeah. alright. We oh, remember Saturday mornings when we used to go to Royal Palace? Oh my god! <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. That was... Yo, yeah. yo, yo, oh, yo, yo, oh, oh my yeah. god. They tore that place down. Now, now they tore it around in circles. Yeah! Yeah, but it was fun. You hear Stacy Q, that song We Connect. Remember that song? What was that, Stacy? Stacy Q, the song We Connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The song. But I remember they after they tore it down, they made it into a Bally's Jacqueline. I remember that. Uh, and now I don't know what they made it. Uh, I, I, uh, I think it's still a fitness club, but yeah. uh, I, I find it really stupid. <laughs> yeah. We had fun back then. Oh, yeah, those were good old uh, days. I mean, if you wanted to look for you, me, him, go to Playboy, go to Triangle. Every Saturday. Yeah. Roll Palace Roll back pa then. Uh, Roll Palace was every Saturday. Uh, every Saturday. Every like a lot of 24-hour diners back in those days. Now they're yeah. like, Greco, remember El Greco we used to go to? El Greco. El Greco is yeah. no more. Yeah, no, sheep's head, right? Yo, they're done yeah. El Greco. And then, three stars. Three stars. Three stars, yeah. There were times that we used to go to McDonald's on King's Highway after yeah. school, remember? Yeah. On uh, East uh, 17th Street. Yes. Yeah, so, do you remember, Mike? Plimpies. Blimpies on uh, East yeah, 17, 18th yeah. Street, yes, on King's Highway. Highway. Yeah, King's Highway, Highway. yeah. That, that was fun. I think they made that into a subway now, you know? Come but on, yeah. you can't fucking, yeah. oh my god, you can't, you can't exchange that for Blimpies, man. Yeah, but those uh, yeah. things back, changed. Back in those days, the gangs used to go to um, the clubs, like Limelight, Palladium, uh, what else, um, the Tunnel. Tunnel, tunnel yes. 1018, uh, Red Zone. Yeah, you should go in there, yeah. but, but even though you were on the age, we still got in there. What's funny, we... <laughs> Excuse me, my friend. You mind yeah. if we uh, just, yeah, just for a moment? All right. Now, I want to show you guys this right here, one ton. This is a, a freaking 13-card place back then. It was association also. 
uh, connected with uh, the second floor where Applehead uh, used to uh, uh, used to hang out. But it's also my hangout that we used to uh, run a gambling house over there. Uh, Ill illegal, uh, uh, I mean, exactly uh, to be exact. So we used to go down there and play uh, 13 cards. Um, our main uh, customer was usually uh, all the all the restaurant workers, uh, uh, waiters that, that are on their uh, um, the their, chefs. Their, their, yeah, the chefs. Uh, when they're on their break, they come down here, and they used to play down there. Yeah. You know? And when they need money, when they run out of money, they come to me. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's where we uh, we take our uh, our, our fucking uh, what do you got? Our, our rig, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this is the rooftop of the Thong On Association, uh, right on Division Street. Jay, can you show us the spot where you guys used to snipe at the dragons? Well, come over here and jump across, climb across the rooftop here, get onto there, and you have a better sight of Bowery Street. Now you have Doyer there on the left, right to your left. And uh, to the right would be Pell Street. So from that rooftop, just a couple buildings over, you'd have a better sight. And um, you know, these guys, the Dragons used to hang out on Bowery Street a lot. Um, I remember them uh, selling fireworks out there during uh, July 4th, Chinese New Year. And uh, it was also dangerous for us because um, for us to use the Manhattan Bridge, we would always have to drive on to Bowery. So, uh, because this is a one way street and you have to make a right turn. Yeah, we have to make a right turn to get onto the Manhattan Bridge. And, you know, they were always on the streets. And it was dangerous for us. So, this was the street. Let me show the viewers. So, this is Division Street and it's a one way street. When you get out of the parking garage, there's only one way out. You make your way down to Bowery and make a right. Yeah, so, um, uh-oh. All right, um, like I was saying, they were they would hang out on Bowery Street a lot and that uh, would be dangerous for us to drive on to Bowery on the Ma Manhattan Bridge. So uh, they decided to uh, snipe a couple of guys and uh, show them a message. And uh, it, it definitely, uh, yeah, they, it definitely uh, deterred them from uh, hanging out there. Uh, yeah. Yo, I want to show you something, guys. Come over here. I got to show you something. Just hanging out wise, I remember years ago, like in 2001. Calm down. Calm down. Whoa, wait. Take a walk over here. Sure. Right over here is a Malaysian restaurant now. Back in the days, it used to be called 69. It was a Chinese restaurant my brother used to own. You could come here at two o'clock in the morning every day, it was packed. I remember the days, they used to have dollars on the walls. My brother used to be here every day, six days a week. Not every day, but six days a week until six in the morning. And the place used to be packed. Do you remember that? Yep, I also remember uh, their uh, celebrity picture uh, wall. Yeah, he yeah. had he had Bill Cosby here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wayne Gretzky was here, I, I think. Uh, I remember, yeah. Came by. Uh, they were yeah. filming Goodfellas. Uh, the cast came here and had dinner. It was really funny, but because this place is totally changed now. It's a Malaysian restaurant, totally different. Back in the days, it was more busier at nighttime than in the daytime. And now is a Malaysian restaurant. You know what I and remember the, I re uh, the most? What? The freaking fried chicken wings. Oh yeah. Oh, that, shit was, that was a bomb, man, back then. Yeah, and Yo, I remember. Every time I'm smoked up back then, finished finish with the clubs, fucking all drunk, tipsy, I gotta get my fucking chicken wings over there. Yo. I remember, I re also, I remember like in 2001, uh, my brother's uh, partners wanted to sell out. And Michael Moy and I were gonna come in on it, but the deal didn't got go through. But we were gonna take over the restaurant with my brother. But uh, unfortunately, Michael Moy had other adventures out there, so I had a little piece in it, and my brother had the biggest piece. 
So, oh, I can yeah. smell the weed right now. Oh yeah, I can smell it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this guy's <laughs> feeling good over here. This guy is feeling good. Yeah, so those were the good old days. I loved it, and now it's just a Malaysian restaurant, and that tells you how history changed. All right, oh, uh, for all the youngsters uh, watching out there, uh, don't be like me. I'm a little bit too fucking old to be smoking weed, doing all that stupid <laughs> shit. Right? My time has, has passed. <laughs> I, be good, stay in school. Okay, we're on Bayard Street right now. I want to share a story with the viewers. You see how narrow the streets are? Let's take a look. See how now the streets, a lot of times the car gets stuck in a traffic jam over here and they can't move. So one day, back in around 1996, I was uh, straight out from the police academy, I was already a police officer. And I was with my girl in the car. And what happened was, the car was stuck in the traffic over here. And I saw a couple of Ghost Shadow members, okay? I would say maybe about four of them. And they were sitting on the hood of the car, right over here. And my car was basically stuck in traffic right next to them. So what happened was um, I was talking to my girl and we were just laughing over something. It was summertime, the windows were open. I was talking to her and she's laughing and I was laughing. And my car pulled up like, stopped like right next to them and they were sitting right over here next to me and they thought like we were talking about them and they felt disrespected because I looked at them, they looked at me. What happened was they ran into the restaurant and came out with a, a long machete, like this long and he had it like right under his arm when he came out. When he went to the restaurant, I already had my gun out. It was a my off-duty revolver 38 Centennial. I, I was sitting in the car with the window down, stuck in traffic, waiting for them to come out. My gun was out along with my NYPD shield on my lap. So when he came at me with the machete, he came right up to me. My car was alongside here with the windows down. He came right up to the car, had the machete, took the machete out, and he saw the barrel of the gun pointed directly at his chest and his knees basically literally buckled and he just like took off running because all he saw was the barrel of the gun and the shield on my lap so when the other guys saw that he ran away so fast and left the other three guys there the other three guys was wondering what the hell was going on because they didn't see the gun it was right on my lap they didn't know what was going on and they took off running the other way hmm. So, fast forward a couple of months later, I was doing an undercover sting operation on a prostitution house in Brooklyn. So, I was undercover, plain clothes, I was wired up, I had the Kel device on me, which is a recording device, because I was going to make a deal with a girl, pick out, so it was a prostitution house so in Brooklyn, uh, I think it's somewhere on 7th Avenue. So. I hooked up with the uh, other undercover officer who were my backup. So I was the one who went in to knock on the door to make a deal with the girl. When I knocked on the door to go in, they let me in and to my left side were two of those ghost shadow members. And to the right side on the couch were all the girls sitting there. So I recognized them right away. I'm like, oh, my cover's gonna be blown. So what happened was, I turned my face around to look at the girl and I quickly pointed to one of the girls. I said, I'll take the girl in white and I walked straight into the bathroom all the way in the rear to keep my composure because I'm like, what the hell do I do now? Because they, you know, those are the same two guys out of the four who was there. And they were, that was their operation and they were running that operation. So I was in the bathroom, I was like thinking, what the hell do I do? Should I come out? If they're gonna see me, if they see the face, because all they saw was like the side of my face and I quickly turned and picked the girl. So I waited, I waited for a while, I came back out and I quickly went inside to one of the empty rooms. And then that's when the girl came in and I had to, I made a deal with the girl. She uh, gave me a price, I asked her how much and then, and then I, I used a secret word, uh, 
password, that's so to speak, right? Uh, a secret phrase that we use for the backup to come in. So once the deal was made, you know, I say those words and they come barging in and they arrest everybody. So including myself, you know, they make it seem like, you know, I'm the customer who's getting arrested as well. So, so that's what happened. So when they took him in, uh, they never got to see me. They never knew it was me, so that was a good thing. Uh, my cover wasn't blown, and um, yeah, so that's what happened. That's one of the stories I had while I was on the job as a police officer and the interaction with the gangs. Well, there's plenty more stories coming your way. All right. What's up? This is Kenny. Uh, right down on Pell Street, Flying Dragons. Uh, I want to give a shout out. To all my flying dragon friends, you know who it is, all right? You know who you are, all right? What's up, guys? How you doing? All right? Miss you guys. Yeah. I miss you guys. So, some Chinatown stories on Bayard Street. Um, I remember, see, how I, when I joined the gang, as violent as I was, that's what they respected. They, they... They, they liked me being violent and just like, you know, just just very like ready to do whatever. So one of the first times so when I learned what we did on the street is all the soldiers in the morning, we would have to get up at like maybe 9, 10 o'clock and we have to tight guys. So that means like watch the street. So some of us will be standing over here. Um, some of us will be standing here, some down there, and we're all our sole purpose here was to protect the street and make sure nobody else was coming to, you know, extort the stores or like, or like, you know, bring bring any harm to the stores because we're paid to protect them. So we, our whole job was just to stand on the street and make sure that there was no other gangsters coming on our street protecting our turf. So I remember one time. I was standing right, I was across the street uh, where that G, uh, where the green sign is next to Melaiwa, right? And we was all on the steps and watching the street. It was me and two other kids, right? Two other young, young, young people my age. And we were sitting there watching. And then there was an older guy with us and he said, stay here, right? He said, stay here. And then they, and I seen there was like a commotion right there that they came and they were talking to somebody and then he brought him inside here. So when they told me, they told us to stay here, the other kids stayed, I didn't listen. I followed them because I want to go where the action is at. I don't want to be standing with these kids. I want to go, what's going on? So I ran over here, and as soon as, before the door closed, I just like slid in the door, and I just stood there like this, right? So I'm at the time, I'm like 12, 13 years old, right? So there's all these guys, that they're like in their 20s and shit. And here I am, I pull up right there and I slide in and then they're pressing him and they're asking him if, you know, he's a gang member or whatever, whatever. So then, um, so then, but he was answering, but he wasn't answering fast enough. So before I could, before anybody said anything, I just like smacked him, bow. And they looked at me and they said, what the fuck are you doing? Right, and then but then they went focused back on him. And long story short, they pressed him, and he said that he he hung out somewhere else. And then they, he had gold tips in his hair. They burnt it off. They they cut his. They burnt it off with a lighter. They burnt the uh, the tips of his hair. Cause back then, that's how you that's how you can determine if somebody was a hangout or not. For my generation, is the dyed hair. Cause if you if you wasn't a hangout, you wouldn't have like the gold tips and the bangs and stuff. So he had that, so we pressed him. And I remember when I smacked him, after everybody left, after he left, they came and they, they told me to go inside and they, to talk to me in the staircase over here. And they was like, they, they was upset at me, man. They, they, they wouldn't let me come back outside for like a week or something. And they locked me in, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I stepped, I, I went against the protocol. Like, you know, he was already being talked to. I'm just a kid. I wasn't supposed to be doing anything, but I did that. But it was, but after I did that, more people started respecting me because they just saw how, like, how witted I was. You know what I'm saying? Like, they was just like, yo, this kid is crazy. I love him. And the more they showed me that, the more enthusiastic I was to do dumb shit. I was just, like, doing dumb shit all the time. Like, anybody that ever said, hey, we need this done, I'll be the first one. I'm, I'm out the door, you know what I mean, before they could even say anything else. So I was very proactive on that because I, I was getting something that I wasn't getting at home. 
I was getting like praise. I was getting love, or so what I thought was love. You know what I mean? Uh, I was getting like you know acceptance. And that's what I really wanted. That's what I felt like wasn't given to me as a kid. So when I came on the street and I felt that, and it was just me being violent that was able to produce that, I kept on doing it. You know what I mean? And um, and yeah, that's one of the that's one of the first times that I got scolded. And there was another story. Actually, there's another story. So in this apartment right here, um, I, there was a big kid. He was like 17 years old. I was 13. He was 17, so we got into an argument, and he was big though. He, he they call him Face. I ain't fat boy, right? So he was big, like three of me. He was three of me, and we started like uh, there was something that was, I guess there was girls there, and I guess they were making fun of me, and I felt like offended. So I started saying something to him, and he and he was like, and he kind of just like he kind of pushed me, right? But he pushed me so hard that I fell. And all the girls started laughing, and I was, like, so embarrassed, right? And in the apartments, there was knives sitting all around. There's lockers with police scanners, guns, knives. There's a lot of knives, right? So I grabbed the sword. They had a sword that was by the TV, and I grabbed that, and there was, like, seven girls there, four guys. We was, they was all chilling, smoking, and doing whatever, um, and I pulled the sword out. And he was He looked at me He said you ain't gonna do nothing with that And I mm. swung it And when I swung it I sliced him Like this Ooh. And he started ch He started running after that He ran out of the door And I started running after him And I'm trying to swing it And everybody is trying to like I don't know We ran all the way He, His fat ass ran all the way down the stairs Boom And ran into the street Right And And I fucking I ran outside too with the sword and I'm chasing and then they was like after that they was like alright that's enough with this guy cause I was just doing too much you know what I mean but uh but yeah that was another story man and um he's good it, I, I hit him too bad but he definitely had a, he had to get a couple stitches you know what I mean but uh but yeah good old Chinatown man back in the days hey China Mac thank yes, you sir. so much for coming on thank and sharing you your stories me. yes sir thank, thank you, you so me. much I appreciate yes, it yes sir and hopefully we're gonna have another interview I'm be coming on your channel one day with a special yeah, let's guest do that. with a special wow. guest one day okay you got yes. surprises this guy got surprises it's gonna be a surprise guest coming on to your channel wow okay? no doubt make appreciate that happen that. we're gonna make that happen yes sir thank you again let's go thank you I shot my arrow, it's time to think it over, I had to I touched that ladder, it didn't really fucking like matter I watched them gather, cause 92 is when it all shining On the bread, BK, one door, get paid Move work, catch face, what more can I say? Be first in battle, trust me, life matters, raised up no father, more like a Chinatown guy, go shadow.